You know, I've always been a Stephen King kind of guy, but after reading a handful of Dean Koontz books, now I'm kind of torn. Welcome to Rumble Book Club. I'm your host, Michael Hernandez. Thanks for supporting the show, and let's get started. About a year ago, I had one of my subscribers ask me to read and review this book personally, and I have finally finished. I'm sorry about the wait, but here we go. We are reviewing The Bad Place by Dean Koontz. In this book, a young married couple forms a private investigative firm in California to fulfill the American dream, and they end up taking on a case that stresses their ability to understand the world as it exists, understand reality itself, and also to understand human evil. Looking at the aesthetics, you can definitely tell that this is a late 80s, early 90s mystery thriller book, uh, given its font, given its choice of coloration. I, I think it's interesting. I think it pops off the shelf really well. Let's move into the readability. Kuntz has a particular gift of being able to use kind of two sides of the same coin. On one side, he's able to use very common vernacular, very normal uh, English language that you and me might use in a discussion, particularly when he's uh, introducing dialogue between characters and they're having back and forth. That's when you see just common use of the English language, but also on the other side of the coin, when he is describing a scenario or describing the oppressive nature of night for a character who has a fear of it, or the beautiful Cal California beachside or countryside, in those moments, he's able to introduce vocabulary that maybe you haven't seen before and kind of test you mentally a little bit more than you're used to in a typical mystery thriller book. So there, there's a, a little bit of that play on the English language that's able to not just entice you into reading more, but also to challenge you and expand your reaches of being able to piece together context clues in a sentence. So I find the challenge actually really invigorating. As far as how it reads on the eyes, it's got very clear font, despite the fact that it is a really condensed paperback with, with uh, clear font, cream colored pages, good uh, paragraph breaks, and actually very brief chapters for the most part. There's not too many chapters that expand past, you know, five pages or so, which allows the dedicated reader to kind of push through all these chapters, but also someone that needs a little bit more of a mental break between chapters. It allows them a chance to read a quick chapter that's one or two pages, go about their business in the day and come back and read some more. So as far as the readability goes, I'm going to give it a perfect score, 10 out of 10. Now let's talk about the content. In this book, Julie and Bobby Dakota are a a young married couple and Julie has experience in law enforcement. Bobby has experience just in computers, technology, investigative uh, skills. And so they form a private investigative firm in California to achieve their American dream and also to be able to achieve the dream for Julie's uh, younger brother, uh, Tommy, who is uh, suffering from Down syndrome and he lives in a home of other people with Down syndrome where they can better take care of him if they don't, if Julie and Bobby don't really have the resources to care for him in their home at the moment. While their job is, for the most part, mundane, most of it is just kind of boring investigations, they understand that there is danger out there, there are scumbags out there, and their job gives them no shortage of dangerous cases. Their first case that you see them take in this book is actually a very dangerous one where Bobby is almost murdered. They believe they've got kind of a good scale on achieving their dream until a man walks into their private investigative firm, Dakota & Dakota, with the name Frank Pollard. Frank Pollard is a man who you open the book up with and he wakes up in an alleyway he's got no memory of who he is what he's doing there where he comes from nothing all he knows the one singular thought he he understands is that there is a force a dark force that's coming after him that it's trying to kill him and he's scared to death of it so he's moving he's constantly on the move and he finds his way in the offices of Dakota and Dakota, begging them for help, not just to stop whatever evil is coming after him, but also to give him answers on who the heck he actually is. One thing that they're able to discover relatively quickly with their investigative skills is the fact that the person, the force that is actually coming after him is his brother, a man by who goes by the name Candy, who is enormous both in his size and capacity for evil, but also in his supernatural telekinetic abilities. Candy has three primary abilities that make him an absolutely voracious hunter and someone that is testing Dakota and Dakota's ability to protect Frank. The first is Candy's ability to teleport, which is something that uh, a quality that Frank actually shares, although Frank can do it with less deliberance. Candy can teleport as he pleases across vast distances to be able to disassociate all the mo molecules of his body and reassociate in a completely different part of the world. 
The second skill he has is a psychic ability to touch objects that were once touched by people and to gain an understanding of the last person to touch that object. For instance, if there was a chair, that the chair that I'm sitting in right now, Candy would be able to feel the chair and to get a sense of who I am and where I went after I sat down in this chair. The third skill Candy has is the ability to deconstruct or to destroy any inanimate object. For instance, if I was holding a gun and I was about to draw on Candy, he could actually bring his hands together and completely obliterate the gun in my hands. And he does this to Frank at one point as Frank's trying to escape in a car. He, for all intents and purposes, disintegrates the car around Frank Pollard in his attempt to slow him down. These are incredible supernatural abilities, but more incredible th than this is Candy's just raw hatred for Frank. His lust for vengeance and for human blood. He is actually someone that thrives on the taste of blood and flesh, which makes him not just horrific, but it makes him more animalistic in his pursuit. And it makes the, the hunt that he's on that much more barbarous and uh, when it has that kind of cannibal nature. As the story goes on, Julie and Bobby are really pushed to the limits of what they can psychologically and emotionally understand, although they are single-mindedly dedicated to finding out this entire mystery to help Frank and also to save his life. But they realize by the end of the book that this might not be an option of being able to save Frank. The book is simply riveting in my opinion. It has moments of, of peace and beauty, of a pensive understanding of humanity and our need for each other, while it also has moments of just pure evil and hatred and vengeance and uh, the misleading nature of our mind's ability to trick ourselves. I found it a phenomenal read, so as far as the content goes, I'm going to give it a perfect score, 10 out of 10. I always feel like I'm a little too nice when I grade these things. I got this from a used bookstore in Katy, Texas. It was a fun read. You can find it on Amazon as well. The book is The Bad Place by Dean Koontz. Thanks for watching, everybody, and go read something.